Hello everyone. Welcome to the second day of USA TEPS Preps 2020 Back to School Conference. I'm ecstatic that each of you are joining me for USA TEPS Prep for the advanced user this morning. My name is Linda. I'm a training manager here at USA TEPS Prep. And like all of you, I'm also a proud educator. I was an English teacher for 18 years at the secondary level. So I taught a mix of grades six to 12, but most of my teaching was at the middle school level. And then after that, I was an instructional coach for five years before joining USA Test Prep. I have an absolute passion for supporting teachers, sharing ideas and collaborating with fellow educators. And so today I want to do just that. We're gonna focus on features in the platform that will support your instruction and the different academic targets that you're going to set for your students throughout the year. The session is going to be an, about an hour. It is being recorded and you will receive an email with a link to the recording so that you have it for your future reference. So before we get started, I would like to just get a feel for who's joining us today. So I'm just gonna launch a quick poll and if you would take a minute and respond to the poll, I would greatly appreciate that. Perfect. Thank you again for taking the minute to take that poll. All right, so with that, here's our focus for today. We are going to dig in the platform with a focus on customization. Because you are all familiar with the platform, we're going to deep dive a little further and really look at customizing within the platform. So really customizing your assessments that you built for your students, the actionable data that you can get from any type of assessment you build and then how you can use that data to further customize assessments and assignments for your students, <clears throat> excuse me, within the platform. We're going to look at the duplicate and compare features in the platform, how to author your own questions, and then we're going to wrap up with a peek into the green dot challenge and how you can incorporate that as part of customizing some learning options for your students. Now, throughout the session, I do want to hear from you. So if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I'm going to stop at points and I'll check the chat and anything you post there, I'm happy to answer. I've also attached a certificate of attendance there in the chat. So feel free to go ahead and download that. And if you're unable to download it, no worries. I'm going to go ahead and put our email in here you can go ahead and email us at usatestprep.com here, the training email, and then we'll be happy to take care of that for you. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go over to the USA Test Prep page. And when you log into USA Test Prep, as you're all familiar with, this is the home page. We're going to go ahead and start diving in with assessments. So that is the third tab over on your home page. And within our assessments builder, you can build assessments to your exact specifications and you're going to be able to gain immediate actionable data around every student that you assign it to and every standard or objective that you include within the assessment. And then you can use that data to support your instructional decisions. All right, so let's go ahead and focus on creating a new assessment. As you know, you always name it. I'm gonna call it sample A, and we'll go ahead and choose math. You have some default settings here. All are changeable, so you can change them so that you can customize the assessment that you are building. So some things that I do want to point out as part of your customizing is for math teachers, you can enable the Desmos calculators. So you may be building an assessment in which you want them to have that, maybe not, but you have that option here to customize. Okay. So I'm gonna leave it, yes. I'm sorry, I was raising my hand. I couldn't see the raised hand um, 
the uh, raise hand thing. Um, do you suggest that we go ahead and sign into our USA test prep and follow along as you're instructing us or no? Not you know, I would say do what works for you. If you okay. feel like, you know, you can kind of follow me and work, then absolutely go ahead. But it's not necessary. And again, you're going to have the link to this recording so that you have it for future reference. Okay, thank you for pointing it out. Absolutely, if you want to open your USA Test Prep account and follow along, absolutely. You also have the option of Spanish translation. So that's another accommodation that you can put in place to customize for any students. The text-to-speech functionality is automatically enabled, but you can disable it. So if you're building an assessment and you don't want the students to have that capability, you can change that. And then lastly here, for students who have an IEP or 504 or other learning plan that may require them to have the accommodation of fewer answer choices, that's another accommodation here you can put in place and customize the assessment that you're building. So I'm going to leave them all set and go ahead to step two and start building the questions. Now in the platform, you have two options. USA Test Prep can choose the questions, which is a pre-built option. And then you have the opposite option, which is the customized. So you can build it yourself. So we're really going to focus in on building it yourself. But before we do that, let's take a look at the pre-built mode. Now with pre-built, this is great for a diagnostic. So if you haven't already done so, this is something that you may want to consider customizing for your students because we're still at the beginning of the school year. So with COVID, you probably don't have all the data that you're used to having at the beginning of the year. So looking at the USA Test Prep Chooses option may be a good place to start and customize it and get some immediate data about where your students are. It's going to build a summative assessment. So you can see here, in the content blueprint, the breakdown of your content, and then the platform is going to build an assessment that will incorporate questions from every one of the domains or strands. So a suggestion, for example, if you teach eighth grade, you could build a diagnostic around the seventh grade material, assign that to your students, and then you can get some immediate data about where strengths and weaknesses are. So you have an understanding of where your students are right now in the beginning of the year. Or the content that you're currently teaching, again, you can go ahead and customize this, assign it to your students, and again, get immediate data about where strengths and weaknesses are and build instructional decisions around that. Now, although this is a pre-built option, you do get to customize the length of the assessment. So from the drop down, you can choose anywhere from small to full. You can even see how many questions are going to be generated by the platform. And this is great to look at as you consider the students you're building it for. So if you have some students that need a small version, but you also have some students that need a medium or larger version, you can customize that and assign it to your students. But again, this option is a full diagnostic. So it is a great place to start. And it's also a great place to use later in the year to give a post test in your particular content. So you can see growth from the beginning to a later period. Now I'm going to change the view to I choose because this is the mode where you get to customize. And we want to put some focus here because our goal is on really customizing the assessments for your students so that you can hit students in your tier one, but then you can also really customize it and target for students that you may have in tier two and tier three, or even accelerate and enrich students who may need to have a little bit more. So in I choose, you're going to see the drop down and you can choose your specific domain. So we'll go ahead and choose the first one. And you'll see all of your standards or objectives here with the plus sign on the left. If you click on the plus sign, it will open the item bank for you. So now you can see the different questions that are available to you. 
and you can choose the questions yourself. So you're going to be able to customize it to your exact specifications. A short quiz around something you're teaching, a benchmark assessment, or if you've given the diagnostic, you've looked at that data, and now you want to build out some different types of assessments that you can use along with your instruction. Right? So the world is your oyster here as you are building the customized assessment. Let me point out a few customizable options you have. Next to each question, you can see the DOK level immediately. So if you want to build an assessment that has very specific depth of knowledge level questions, it's already here for you. So you can put in place some scaffolds. You may want to build some assessments or some benchmarks or quizzes that start with the lower level DOK and then build up or you may need to build for some students that need acceleration and you wanna just go ahead and include the higher level depth of knowledge questions or build where you have a, a variety of level and the difficulty, this is already available to you. Now also in the drop down here, you can sort the questions by low DOK or high DOK. If I selected low DOK, it's gonna go ahead and just push all those to the top for me so that I can easily see those. Now, to add them to your assessment, as you know, just check the box to the left and it adds it to the assessment you're building. You can see the number that we're keeping count here for you. Also, remember you can click on the stem if you wanna see the whole question and then just click the plus sign to add it. Now, remember you're customizing here. So build whatever you need. You may just want to build a quiz around a very specific objective that you're teaching right now. You can do that. If you're teaching a number of objectives and you want to include that, just click on the plus sign and go ahead and select whatever questions you need. You can add from as many of your standards and objectives as you need to. And you can also add in from other domains. So at the bottom, you have the add questions from another domain link. If you click on it, then it opens the domain dropdown for you and you can go ahead and select another domain and any other standards by clicking on the plus sign. So in step two, which are your multiple choice questions, customize the assessment you're building to whatever specifications you need so that it's geared toward whatever students you're building it for. Now, if you just want multiple choice questions, you can customize it that way. You can go ahead and just skip to the preview. You're always going to see this link here at the bottom. It allows you to skip and just go to preview so you can save it and assign it. But keep in mind in the platform, we do offer other types of questions you can add to an assessment, which enables you to customize it even further for your students. So we offer performance tasks. These are technology enhanced. So this is outside of the traditional multiple choice. Students are gonna do things such as classify, highlight, match, order. But again, you can choose your domain, choose your very specific standards. You can click on it if you wanna see it in its entirety before you make any selections. And then here in the type column, you can see the exact type of performance task it is. So if you're customizing and you're looking for something very specific that you want your students to do, this column is going to be helpful for you. We offer eight different types of performance tasks. And just like with the questions, you can add as many as you need to for your students. So you just check the box. You can add from as many different objectives as you need to. And again, at the bottom, remember, you always have the domain link. So if you want to add from another domain, just open the drop down again. Skip to preview if you have included what you would like in the test you're customizing. But you can also add two part items. Now with two part items, students are going to have a single source. And that source is going to be different based on what you teach. So it could be a map, a graph, but it will be a source for students to consider. And then they will have two questions connected to it. Okay, so if you've never seen that, let me click on this. So they have a source on the left and then two questions connected to the source. 
So again, you can add those into your assessment from as many standards and objectives as you need, as well as from other domains. And then lastly, you can always add in free responses. These are open-ended. Students are going to think and can construct their own response. Now, because of that, these are not auto graded. We want you to really take a look at your students' responses and then score and award them the point value that you feel is worthy. But again, you get to customize and choose whatever you like, whatever is going to work best for your students. And again, you can always click the stem so that you can fully see it before you make a choice. As you can see in this sample, this is a two part question and sometimes the questions will require students to respond to two, sometimes three parts, sometimes it will even require them to do a type of drawing model along with the constructed response. So to add it, check the box. Again, because you are going to score it yourself, you also assign the point value. But we do always provide you a key for free responses that help with the scoring. So we will give you some keywords, some phrases and ideas that you may wanna look for in your student's response. And then you have the preview, step seven. So you get to see the customized assessment that you have built. I would suggest using your stats button. When you click here, you can see the exact breakdown of the assessment that you've built. So you can see the length, the DOK levels that are represented, and then the domains or strands and the elements that you've included. So if you are customizing for something very specific, this is gonna help you see exactly what's included in the test you've built. And then here in preview, you can make any changes that you need to make. You wanna go ahead and save it. You get your success message. We're gonna go back up here to the open link assessments so that that will take us back to assessments. And then you're going to find the assessment that you've built completely customized to whoever you have built this for, your entire class, tier two or tier three students or a group of students that need some different type of intervention or even students that need some acceleration or enrichment. Okay. Now we're going to deep dive into looking at the data that you can get from any assessment that you customize for your students and then what you can do to further customize that. Now I do see a question um, here in the chat so I'm going to go ahead and answer that. Are you able to customize to the individual test taker or just to the test itself? You can do that. So can I put that question on the burner, the back burner for just a couple minutes? And when I show you how to duplicate, that is going to show you exactly how you can customize it to very individualized students. Great, I promise I'm not gonna forget to answer that question. Now, once you have assigned the assessment to your students, you're going to want to look at your data. Is your data is going to give you a lot of information about how your students are performing in those standards that you have included. So let's look, take a look at the day one diagnostic here. To access your results, you're gonna click on the link here and this number indicates how many students have submitted it. And when you click on that, you're going to get a wealth of information about your assessment. The percentage score. This is a score of all students who submitted it. If you have assigned it to different groups of students, you can break it down by selecting from a particular class here in your drop down. But importantly, on the right, you have your information box. So you can see exactly what you assess by domain or strand and by the particular elements. And you can see exactly how the students performed. Now below that, you're going to have four tabs with some different data. We're gonna really hone in on the remediation tab is this tab is gonna allow you to really customize further some support for your students. So here you can see every student who submitted the assessment 
exactly what you assessed. And then you have our color coded dot rank visual here. This visual allows you to quickly see and pinpoint the strengths and the areas where students are going to need some remediation and reinforcement. So with the green dots, these are areas of strength. Students are performing at 85% or better. The orange dots in the middle, 66 to 84% can still use some practice. And then pink dots are 66% or below. So definite areas for remediation. And by looking at the dots here, you can immediately see where the strengths and weaknesses are. Now, you can assign some remediation within the platform in a couple ways. So let's start with the two blue links you have here. These allow you to assign instant remediation to students. The first one is based on the whole class performance. So notice that the silhouette has multiple people. When you click on it, you can see the three weakest areas of performance. And now you're going to be able to assign some remediation without having to build anything. That's the great thing about the links here. You can choose one area, two areas, or all three of the weakest areas from the assessment. The start date is going to be the date that you want the students to start working on it and they won't be able to see it or access it from their page until this date. So you can always set it for a date in the future. You'll see your students here and you can opt to assign it to everyone because this is based on the whole class or you may look at your dot rank data here and individualize it and only assign the extra practice to certain students. So the platform allows you to really customize the remediation so that all of your students are going to be able to get exactly the type of practice that they need to get to a mastery level of skills. All you have to do is click assign and it's that easy. All the students that you've checked here will receive a remediation assignment in each area that you checked. Okay, so in this case, the students are going to get three different assignments and it will be sets of practice questions. Now your second option, I absolutely love this link because it is individualized. So notice the silhouette only has one person. So what you choose here is going to assign remediation to each student in their individual weakest areas. So you can make a decision to assign it in just one weak area, their two weakest areas, or all three of their weakest areas. And again, the start date is the first date they're going to be able to work on it. And then your due dates, the, the last date you want them to work on it. All of your students, again, you'll see, and you can assign it to everyone. Or again, you can look here at your dot rank data and individualize it and assign it to students that you feel really need to have this specific remediation in their weakest areas. So again, you're going to click assign and it's automatically assigned to them. Okay, So you don't have to build anything. That's the great plus to the two links here. It's instant you know it's standards aligned and your students are going to get the extra practice that they need. Okay. Now, what if you want to build it? You want to customize it yourself because with these links, the students are going to get sets of practice questions, but you may want them to have more than just some practice questions as part of their remediation. So you can build it yourself. So we're going to look at that in just a minute. But before we do that, let me just quickly point out the other tabs. You do have an item analysis. So you can see all of your questions. And by default, you're just seeing it in, by the questions that you chose. But you can look at your data in three different views. You can look at it by the domains that you've included, the elements you've included, or the depth of knowledge levels that you've included. I'm going to just click on the domain link to show you. And it will refresh and now you can see your data broken down by the specific domains. So that helps you look at the data in different ways. So then you can make some decisions about some other ways you may want to customize. For every question, you can see the percentage correct. 
and then you can view each of those questions. So let's choose one where the percentage correct was only 64%. As educators, we would certainly want that to be higher. But now what you can see here is exactly how students chose the answer. So you can see there was choosing between B and D. So that gives you some good information. But you can also see which students answered it correctly as well as incorrectly. So that can also be helpful for you to do some grouping. You can also see your data by individual student. And if you click view, you can see each individual student's performance in the assessment. And then lastly, for all assessments, you have the grade distribution chart here. Now, all of these buttons do have the export. So if you want to export your data, you can do that so that you can see it in that view as well. All right, now back in remediation, we've looked at instant remediation. You have the links, click on it, assign it to who you need, target certain students. It's all standards aligned, so you're comfortable knowing that your students are getting the practice they need. But in some cases, you may wanna build it yourself. And you can do that in our platform as an assignment. So we're going to go to building an assignment straight from this data right here. You, as you know, there is an assignments tab on your home page, but you can also get there by going directly from your data here. And that's how we're going to do that. So looking at the dot rank, I can see where there are some gaps that would need to be filled in. So I'm going to look specifically at patterns of inheritance. I can see that pretty much as a whole, everybody needs some extra practice there, except Lance, who seems to have done pretty well there. So what I'm going to do is click on the dot, and the dot acts as a shortcut. It takes me directly to create an assignment. So I have some options. I can create a one activity assignment, just one activity that you can assign, one video, one set of questions, one performance task. But I suggest if you're going to build an assignment for your students' remediation, you select the two plus option because then you can provide students some different types of activities to work through to practice. So let's select two plus. You see your students and notice that David's name is already checked. And that's simply because I clicked on David's dot when we were looking at the dot rank. But what I know from my data is that all of these students need this extra practice. So I'm gonna target all of these students. I'm not gonna give it to Lance because Lance did rather well. Click continue. And just like an assessment, you want to name it. Choose your very specific content. And then here's your drop down. So now you're going to be able to customize it. So I know that was in the genetics domain. And here's patterns of inheritance. So here's that pink dot. I know that they didn't do very well there. I want to now create the remediation, the extra practice. Now I can do a few things here because notice, because I've assessed these areas as well, these areas are not very strong either. So I could create an assignment that incorporates all of these or I can make it standard specific. I'm going to make it standard specific, but keep in mind that as you customize, you can do this any way you need to. Now notice that there are seven different types of activities I can have the students work through to get this extra practice. I can include all of them or just some of them. You're customizing, it's totally up to you based on what you know your students need. So I will incorporate some more questions. The platform will generate a set of questions around this particular standard. I definitely want them to have a command of the vocabulary, so I wanna add in some vocabulary practice. And the platform is also going to generate the vocabulary practice. Maybe a free response. Now notice the modal popped up because that you do get to choose. So you'll see what's available connected to your specific standard objective. 
click show all so you can see the full question. And you can add in as many as you would like. Now keep in mind that this is a free response. So if you include it, you will have to manually score it. You want to be sure to save it. And then it shows you here exactly how many you've incorporated. You can add in some performance tasks. So I want to do that. Again, the modal pops up. You get to choose those. You can click on the link if you want to preview it to make sure that you are selecting a performance task that meets the needs of your students. Check it to add it. You can add more than one. You just want to make sure that you save. This is how you can assign your students videos as well. You can click on the video to preview it ahead of time. Check the boxes to add it. You can add more than one. Just be sure to save. You can add in puzzles. The platform will generate the puzzles. And then you can incorporate some games for students. So the games are good brain breaks, a way to break up the monotony of the different activities that you include. You have three options for games. And you can click if you want to just preview how the games play before you select. And as students play the game, they'll have questions to answer that are connected to the standard here. Check the box to add it. You can add more than one. So I'm going to add two here and then save it and close. So I have customized a very specific set of activities that my students can work on to get some extra practice. Again, I could add in the other two areas. I don't have to add all these. You can customize it for the group of students that you're building it for. Now, if you need to add in another domain, you can always do that in the platform. Click on the bottom link here, add more practice, and then you can select another domain. Okay, so I'll just open another one so you can see. Again, these are areas that have been assessed. So I have data and I can add in any other things I want to add in to this custom assignment. All right, click continue. And then the final step is go ahead and assign it to the students that you have selected. Here's what you've chosen. You can change this order. If you want to change it, just click and drag. All you have to do is click and drag. Now, by default, the completion order is in specific order. So they will have to complete it in the order that you set here. If you want to give them some autonomy, you can certainly do that. Just change the setting. And that way, they can complete it in any order that they like. So it's another way for you to customize for students. Now, before you go ahead and save it, you have three columns here minimum score requirement, the number of attempts you can allow students in the practice or allowing them to retry. That's an option for vocabulary, for questions, and for performance tasks. If you set a minimum score requirement, because this is practice, let's say you decide they need to get a 75 on this before they can move on. They will have unlimited attempts to work on it until they reach the 75. So they would start over from the beginning, work through it again until they reach the 75%. Now this is optional. You don't have to put in a minimum score requirement. Your other option is you can give them a certain number of attempts. Maybe you want to just give them two attempts at it before they move on. Or you can allow the students to just retry the items that they miss. So in this case, they would not have to work on it again from the beginning. So just some ways that you can customize the assignment that you build. If you've added a free response, select your point value before you assign it. And then it's been assigned to the students that you selected. You've customized it, assigned it, and now they're ready to work on it for some extra practice. I'm going to go back to assignments here. Here's the link. And that assignment is going to now live in your assignments tab. Now I got to assignments by clicking on the dot. But remember, 
you have the assignments tab here. You can always go directly to the assignments tab, click on create new assignment, and then it takes you directly to where we started. So you can build the assignment from there. And then just like assessments, you do have your data column here. So you can look at student results as well. Okay, I'm going to click this link and just go ahead back to the home page and I'm going to stop for a minute and I see there are a few questions in the chat. So we're going to look at that before we look at duplicating and comparing. Okay, if you don't see the, the PDF or the link to the certificate, I'm again going to type in our email. So you can just email us at training at usatestprep.com here. Let us know what you need and we will happily get that out to you. Just a reminder that you are going to receive an email with the link to this recording so that you have it for future reference. Absolutely, we're going to make sure that you have that. Do students have to finish an assessment in one sitting? They do not. They're, when they're taking an assessment, there's a button there where they can save it and resume later. So all they will have to do is click that and then they will be able to go back to the assessment and finish it at a later time. It's a great question. Okay, so the, the other questions have to do with being able to customize and change some of the different settings. So we're getting ready to look at that. In terms of cutting off the assessment, you don't have the functionality to actually just cut students off of it. What you can do is you can lock an assessment. So for an assessment, you do have the lock feature. So you can click here and lock it and it does prevent students from being able to start it or, or access it until you unlock it. So you can lock it until you're ready for them to access it. And maybe at the end of the school hours, you don't want them to be able to access the assessment any further until maybe the next day, you can go ahead and lock it and it will prevent them from being able to access it again until you unlock it. Yes, thank you, Megan. The save and resume button for students in an assessment is at the bottom. Okay, great questions. Keep questions coming in the chat. All right, so we've looked at how to build those assessments, use the different features to customize them the way you want, offer your students some remediation based on your data, some instant remediation, as well as the remediation that you can build and customize yourself. So the last two things we wanna look at in assessments is some different options that you have so that you can customize it for specific groups of students. So let's look at the sample that we created. And we're going to move over to the options drop down. In the drop down, you have a number of options as you can see, but we're going to focus on two duplicating and comparing. Anytime you want to duplicate an assignment, it makes an exact copy of it. You want to click on duplicate, click the button, click OK. And now you see you have that same assessment, but it says duplicate next to it. So why would you duplicate? A couple of reasons. One, you might want to put in some accommodations that target certain students that you don't want all of the students to have. So you can make a copy of it, change out some of the accommodations, and then assign that particular version to those students. Another reason is you may want to create a pre post option and duplicating it allows you to create a second version. So then you can assign that test again to your students and then you can compare and we're going to look at comparing next. But here's the duplicate. If I wanted to change some accommodations so that certain groups of students have some specific options go to settings. 
you can change the name here so that it's different. So I'm just going to change it to 2.0. But then here are the settings that you put into place originally. So now you can offer some different accommodations to target certain students. For example, for this particular group, I may want to only give them the three choice option. So I'm going to change that. And that's the only thing I want to do here. But remember, you can change any of these other settings. Be sure you save it so that it updates. So now this version, it's the same test, but you have applied some very specific accommodations that are necessary. And then you just need to assign this one to those specific students. Okay. Now the other thing you can do when you duplicate, you can edit the assessment as well. So if you click on the pencil here, it takes you back to preview and you can make some changes. So maybe not only do you want to change the accommodations, you may want to change some things about the questions or other items that you've included. So you can now do that. You can remove a question. Maybe there are some questions that you want to take out for this particular duplicate. You can also change out the questions. So if you're using this as perhaps a post test or again, just to accommodate some other students, you can click the link here, peruse the other options, and then click the choose option button and it's going to change out the question. Okay. You want to be sure to click save assessment so that whatever changes you make to the assessment update and then you have that assessment here to go ahead and assign to students. All right, let me answer a few questions that I see here. Yes, if you allow the option for students to view a question in Spanish, they have an icon. They just have a pink icon that they can look at. And when you click on the icon, it allows them to translate. So I'm going to click on a question here so you can see it. So here's the English speech icon. So yes, for each question, they click on it and then it translates it into Spanish. And to go back to English, just click the icon and it goes back to English. If you delete an assessment, here's the delete. It is going to delete the assessment and all the data that goes along with it. So if you're not sure that you want to get rid of it, you want to keep it, you can go to options here and you have the function to just archive it. So that way you're not deleting it, but it'll hide it for you. So if you do still need it, it's not gone. All right, perfect, great questions. All right, so the last thing we want to look at in assessments here is how to compare. To compare two assessments, so you're going to compare apples to apples. So you want to compare assessments that have the same standards. You want to start with your original assessment. So let's start with the day one diagnostic in the drop down. Select compare. And then it's going to show you assessments in which they are apples to apples. So go ahead and select the assessment to compare it to. I want to compare it to the day one diagnostic post so that I can see the growth. Click compare. And then this should look familiar to you because now again, you're going to see the percentage. Here's your information box. And now you can see whether there's been growth or where there are some areas that still need some extra support. So for example, here in evolution, there's been a 14% gain between the pre and the post. You can see that by the light green indicated here. You can also break it down and view further by the element. And here's an area in which students still need some extra reteaching and reinforcement. So there has 
not been the growth that as educators we would like to see. And you can see that with the pink here. And notice it's patterns of inheritance again in genetics. And then here's another area. So this gives you some data and now you can further customize some support for your students. So you have the remediation tab again. You can now assign class average weaknesses or individualized weaknesses. And you can again click on the dot and then customize some extra practice for your students. Now keep in mind that this data is now a combination of the assessments you're comparing, the pre and the post. So we've honed in on assessments and really looked at how to build that customized assessment, how to use the actionable data so that you can make sure that your students are getting the exact practice that they need, and also how to create assessments and incorporate different accommodations so that you can target certain groups of students, as well as how to look at data from two different assessments. What if you wanted to create some content of your own? You can do that in our platform. So we're going to go over to the favorites tab here and we're going to quickly look at how to build your own content. So you might want to add some questions of your own. Maybe you didn't see some questions in our builder that you would like to have as part of an assessment. You can build them in our favorites tab here and then add them to your assessments to further customize it. So in this way you can build some other questions that offer some different levels of strategic or extended thinking that you might want to offer your students. So to do that again go to your favorites tab here. You have a create new question link click on that and now you're going to be able to create your own questions. Start by choosing your content and I'm going to choose eighth grade ELA this time. Choose your domain, literary comprehension, and then you can drill down to the very specific element around which you're building this content. Click continue. And you can see what you've selected. If you want to change the content area, you have the link here. And when you're building your own content, you have the choice of building a multiple choice question or a free response. So the steps are the same. So we'll build a multiple choice question. And now you can see the different things that you need to incorporate. Let's start with the first three items, the image, the passage, and the prompt. These are all optional. So these first three items are completely optional. You can upload an image by simply clicking the plus sign here. It can be an image that you have on your desktop already or it's in your network drive, that's fine. We do have some parameters for, you know, the height and the width, and it does need to be a JPEG, a GIF, or a PNG, but you're not constrained to public domain images. It's fair use, so you're going to be able to upload an image that you have, so that's a great plus. However, it's optional. You don't have to include an image. You can also add in a passage, click, and then you'll see the different passages that are available. In this case, you can see it's 574. So maybe there's a passage that we have in our platform. You saw it, it didn't have questions that you want connected to it. So you can select that passage and then create the questions yourself. You can also add in your own prompt right here if you choose to. So it could be uh, a speech, a reading, or some other text from your content, you can go ahead and paste that here if you like. Images, passages, and prompts, completely optional. Now the next three are required. So of course you do need to put in your question. I'm just going to put in a basic question here. You want to provide the answer choices. What are the choices students can select from?
and then to the right, check the radio button of the correct answer. And then lastly, offer some explanation or feedback. So you notice in, in the platform where there are questions, we do give students a one to two sentence explanation about why an answer is correct or incorrect. So you want to also incorporate that here. It can be as short or as long as you need. It can just be a restatement, but you do want to make sure to give a little explanation or feedback. So I'm just going to put it as blue here and then review your question. So you can see exactly what you selected, your correct answer. You included a passage, you can view it. This is the answer we chose is correct. If you wanna edit it, here's your link. And then when you're ready, click submit. And then the platform begins the process of saving your question. It may take a few seconds, there you go. And if you wanna go ahead and just add another question, click the button and you will follow the same steps. And we're going to close this and now here's the question that you've built. So every time you build a question it's going to live here and you can add it to any assessment that you're building for students. So this offers you another way to really customize the activities that you can offer students within the platform. I actually love this favorites feature of being able to add your own content. I'm going to click here on this link and go back home. And remember, authoring your own questions is in your favorites tab. Click the create new question link, and then that starts the process of allowing you to do that. Okay, assessment results. Assessments always live in your assessments tab. And for every assessment, you have results here. So to get to results, just click on the number icon. And again, the number just lets you know how many students have submitted it. So click on it. And then that's where you see all the results connected to the assessment. Now, as an administrator on account, if you have administrative privileges, you are going to be able to see the data around the school focus. So you'll be able to see school-wide data um, and look at the different results from each of the teachers in your building. So we do have an admin session that is occurring today at two o'clock. So if you have admin privileges and you know that because you'll see admin under your name here in the navigation bar, I recommend joining that session. All right, excellent. I'm going to jump back over to my slides for a little bit. And the last thing we're going to take a look at in the few minutes that we have remaining is the Green Dot Challenge. The Green Dot Challenge is another way that you can customize the learning for students within the platform. The Green Dot Challenge is a way to empower students to own their own learning, but I also like to call it win-win learning because it's a productive way for you as the teacher to collaborate with your students to practice and master all the skills in your content. So you can use the Green Dot Challenge as a teacher class collaboration. You can assign specific things from that page as you're teaching and have students work on it. It can also be drilled down to teacher-student collaboration where you can target very specific skills for very specific students, but it can also just be an independent learning option for your students. Now with the Green Dot Challenge, and I'm gonna actually go back over to the live site and we're gonna look at it in a minute. You can set very specific goals for students and this can be done at the class level or again, based on the needs of individual students. You set the parameters for the specific standards that you choose. And then the students get to actually work on scaffolded practice on whichever activities you're assigning or that they choose themselves. You can check in on the progress as they work. And then once they master it, which is gonna be denoted by the green dot, which is why we call it the green dot challenge, then you can set new goals for students, all right? So let's go back over. 
we're going to log in as a student and look at the green dot challenge. So let's log in as Lance. And students can navigate to that practice page by hovering over practice in their navigation bar and then just selecting the specific content for which they would like to practice. So the practice page opens up for students. It has all of the domains and strands and standards that you're teaching and that they have to master throughout the year. To the right, they'll already see the dot rank populated if you have already had them take assessments in specific areas or activities. That's all going to be incorporated in the dot rank here. So they can also immediately see where their own strengths and weaknesses are. So that's part of where the empowerment lies for students. For each one of these standards, they're scaffolded practice activities for the students to work through. So again, you can empower this with your whole class because as you're teaching, you can have students come to this page and work on very specific activities that you assign. So maybe you're teaching organelles and homeostasis this week. And as part of that, you have students come and watch certain videos. You have them work on the vocabulary. You have them work on some questions. You have them work through some performance tasks. And the goal is for the student to master the skill and see this dot turn green. They have the scaffolded activities for every single standard here. And again, the goal is to work through the activities at a mastery level because what the student would want and what you would certainly want as a teacher is for the dot to be green. So again, you can use this with your instruction, with your whole class through items you assign, or you can have students set goals. You select some specific goals let the student select some, set a time frame, have the student work at their pace, and then you can check in on the progression. But again, the goal is to get to the mastery level. And then of course, this can be independent because the students can access this without you having to give them any direction. They can just go to their practice page and work in their areas of weakness on their own. So that's just a way to incorporate some extra customization for your students by using the independent practice page and the activity that we call the green dot challenge. Okay, we are right at our time. So if there are any further questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and I'm more than happy to respond to any other questions that you have. Great stuff, thank you. That's what we want to hear. And again, if you were unable to access the PDF, again, go ahead and email us at training at usatestprep.com. We'll take care of that for you. You are going to receive an email with the link so that you have this for future reference and you can listen to it at any time. And for joining me today as a thank you, we are offering a 10% discount off of any new licenses that your school purchases in the next 30 days. Just contact us at success at usatestprep.com and use the promo code here. Is there a way to see the settings on the practice that you just showed? the practice in the student page. I'm assuming that you're talking about the student page here for the green dot challenge. Is there a way to see the settings on the practice? So you don't get to see um, the specific settings here from this practice. You can see the results of what students complete in this practice page. So those results are going to be accessible to you through your class results right here. So if you click on class results for the class that that student is in, then you're going to be able to filter and see the results 
of the different practice activities that the students complete within their page. That's where you would find that. So I guess my question is with the other ones, with the when we made an assignment, you could set it to unlimited versus unlimited try. That's okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Within yeah. the student independent practice, you don't have the capability to put those specific settings in place. So do you know what the default is? Is it defaulted to let them try as many times until they reach a minimum percent, like 75, or is it only letting them try once or twice? So they can, they actually are going to have the try again link. So they're going to be able to try it as many times as they need to. So I'm gonna open this one. So notice here it has a link that says try again. So they can click that and try again and try again. They can keep working at it. Thank you. You're welcome. That's a great question. Okay, everyone, I hope you are excited about using USA Test Prep with your students this year and that you'll be able to knowledgeably use these features to customize for your students so that you can meet the needs of all the different students that you have in your classes. We're dedicated to making sure that you can use the platform knowledgeably. So anytime you have questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. We're more than happy to help. Thanks again for joining me. I hope to see you in some of the other, other sessions that we're offering today. It's already Thursday, the weekend's near. So have a great Thursday and a great end to your week, everyone. Take care.